cute. Oh, they're very cute. Something gross just happened. Oh, I'm being depressing, aren't I? I wish I could show you my nipples, but loads of pus came out. Eating disorder recovery. How cute are these? What do I do? It just gets better. How pretty. I am seeing a therapist for anxiety and panic disorder. Spiraled my mental health to like a really fucking terrible place. <laughs> Look what I've made. How cute are these? I've made Mother's Day cake. So this one's for my mum and this one's for B's mum. Obviously he has to have the ugly plate because he has to travel with it and drive to Milton Keynes. How cute are these? So I, they're just chocolate cakes and I got a big, a couple of bunches of flowers from Tesco just to like do these things. So I've got all of these left, which is so nice because they just look so cute and springy. And now my kitchen is just full of cake and spring and I absolutely love it. Sorry, this has just been my little photo area. Also I've taken pictures of them, but aren't they just, ugh, I love them. You know, I said last time that my car was dinked <laughs> by my neighbor. He's just dropped these round, which is so sweet of him. Like he was, oh hi. Look, wait, 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 wait. Oh, no, 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 do look, I'm just, Come in, yeah, come in and look at um, the cake I made your mum. Oh wow! Aren't they cute? Oh, they're very cute. Well done, thank you. You're welcome. That one's that one. Look. Oh, she's gonna love it. Look. Can you match up the flowers? No. Oh, oh. guess who they're from? Uh. Pretty, huh? I don't know who they're from. They're from. Oh, the card's gone. Uh, dinky neighbour who dinked the car. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Dinky neighbour saying, please don't make Shut us up. pay all that. Maybe I'll call him dinky neighbour. Yeah. Was he just knocking hand at you? Yeah, he also buzzed downstairs as well. So Anne was down there. Yeah, I don't think he knows which one you came PJs, from. PJs, yeah. In a PJs. Sorry about that. But yeah, I was just saying, these. Um, my neighbour dropped these off for dinking the car. And he's like, like it's so not beef. <laughs> And we just did it through the insurance and it was really easy. Didn't realise if you're both insured with the same company, it's the easiest thing to sort out. Like, he just told Admiral my number plate and my name and my like details. And they've literally organised it all for me. I haven't even had to do anything. Because he was apologising. I was like, it's literally like no drama. Don't, <laughs> like you don't even need to apologise. It was such a normal mistake. Like don't worry and then he was like oh i know but it's just a hassle i was like it's literally not been any hassle at all anyway how like beautiful actually are these beautiful bunch of really gorgeous spring flowers in my already beautiful spring display <laughs> this makes me so happy i've actually not been sort of vlogging or really been online very much over the past few days feeling like a bit brighter today like a bit more hopeful about life <laughs> um but i never talk about it but obviously i feel like the reason i started to exist online like my instagram bio is eating disorder recovery um but it's something i don't talk about that much anymore but um it's still a huge and significant part of my life and it's something I still struggle with every day. No, I don't struggle every day. I don't. But it's a part of my existence, I guess. And this week's just been really difficult and I've really struggled with... Oh, my friends say we're going for a walk. I'm gonna tell you about this later because I feel like it's something I should talk about and we should have a conversation about. But yeah, it's so sunny. I'm gonna go get some sun. I'm back. I'm really cold. <laughs> Just went on a nice long walk with my friend. And it's actually about three hours later. But yeah, I just wanted to be honest and let you know that I still very much struggle with food. And at the minute, I am very much struggling with food. I actually feel really poorly because I've of because of it i guess because of it yeah i just i'm very like t 
tired and cold and my body doesn't know whether it's coming or going i can tell i've really just hmm yeah um i don't really, i don't really know what to say it's difficult but i did um have, have therapy on when uh thursday this week and we were talking about it and i am like always and always will be the biggest advocate for therapy in general if you're lucky enough to be able to have access to it it is like life-changing and just very important but it's still difficult it can be really difficult and for a lot of things it can be really do you know what? i never use this word but triggering talking about a specific topic can really temporarily like fuck with your head and and it can feel like a regression in progress and i think that's just what's happening this week it's not a regression it's just dealing with things oh i'm being depressing aren't i yes my plan today was going to be to go for a walk with my friend and clean the house but i just don't have the sort of energy or motivation to do that right now since I've been back from the walk, to be honest, I've just been sitting. I'm just like curled up on the sofa and then sitting in my room and then sitting other places and just not doing anything. I'm just sort of distracted in my head. So I need to think of something to get me, I don't know, doing something at the minute. I don't know, sorry, this is probably a big, weird, I don't even know. Um, but, I've got nothing else to say. <laughs> Excuse the makeup. It's a thing. I just, I'm halfway through taking it off, which is why it looks a little bit crazy. <laughs> does anyone get travel jealousy? I feel like everyone does, because I feel like it's a thing, but at the minute, I just, I'm getting so, like, genuinely jealous of all these people I follow on social media who just seem to constantly be on holiday. And it's not true, it's just my perception of them. But I feel like in the sort of social media like worlds that we exist in, like <laughs> so many people, like so many creators go on holiday <laughs> and press trips. Like a lot of it is obviously press trips. And it just feels like it's constant. I've literally just paused a vlog of someone I follow who I actually like, I really love. I really love everyone that I follow. I wouldn't follow or watch any content of people I didn't really like. And she's just started her vlog in the Maldives. I'm like, why is everyone doing really cool stuff and I'm not? I feel like everyone feels this and I need to like check in with myself and have a word with myself and not let my literal feelings of like, I guess jealousy is the, is the thing, manifest into anything more than a bit like, oh, I wish I was on holiday, but I do. I just, I keep seeing all these fabulous adventures and holidays and experiences that people are having. And I want that for myself because obviously it's been so long since I've been away. I don't know about you, but I've not been on a holiday of any sort in um in three and a bit years so i hadn't been on holiday for a while before the the pandemic happened and then the pandemic pandemic happened <laughs> and i didn't go away like in the little windows we had during covid of like you can go away now and then you can't and the rules were obviously really strict and i knew i'd find um traveling with really strict restrictions very stressful things like organizing PCR tests and that kind of thing and the anxiety of possibly being positive in another country and then quarantining like that wasn't sort of something I think I'd be able to handle but now obviously the world is like we're able to travel again I need to like convert my feelings of like feeling like I'm missing out on life to actually just booking something it's not going to be anything like the Maldives or some of these incredible trips that I've been seeing but I think me and B seriously need to book a little cheap and cheerful trip to like like Spain or somewhere not too far away. Something to, to like remind me how travel works. Because I honestly don't know. Like being in an airport is almost like a foreign concept to me now. That just shows how like lucky and privileged I am and have been that normally I do get to go on holiday once a year or probably not quite once a year to be honest before the pandemic but like once every other year 
yeah probably once every other year i would go away and they'd either be like little trips with b like we've done a few trips together now or like family holidays anyway i don't know why just this evening i was like oh everyone's living their best lives which is always what we see because we only see social media which is i know it's such a like typical saying and it's almost lost its value but like it is a highlight reel we do see people's best bits so obviously when people go on holiday they will show that understandably i will do the exact same when i book somewhere that was a really weird little rant from me i don't know why these feelings just overcame me this evening um, but i'm just gonna jump in the bath and i thought i'm wearing a little cute vest top because uh because I felt like it and I've worn my bra for like nine days straight now and I just wanted like an hour break so I thought I'd put on this nice little top that is actually incredibly supportive anyway. But I can show you how the boobs are doing. So they are definitely getting back to the size that I sort of remember them being. The scars I'll show you underneath in just a minute but um, like they, they're much squishier now like I don't know how much I can show you but like they they feel much softer there's still a hell of a lot of swelling like the middle bits is very hard but like i can even move them a bit like that <laughs> granted not very much the swelling is so massive and i know i said in the last vlog that i was getting um recovery envy i was comparing myself to other people's recovery which is obviously never a good idea i'm now a month post-operation and i'm still like there's no such thing as like a head or in front but like behind use that term loosely where this lovely woman that i follow on youtube is and i just have to remind myself like i had a huge reconstruction of my entire chest i am not going to be recovering in anything less than six months so so i need to just go a bit easier on myself and know that my body is doing amazing and it is working so hard to get me healed and back to activity again and all that stuff but anyway they they look fine like they feel good they're comfortable there's um lots of stitches like still dissolving and spiky bits and red bits and itchy bits and bruise bits but overall like they are healing like i'm healing really well which is awesome i'm going to show you the underneath now so don't watch this if you don't like it's not gory there's no blood there's no like pus it's just a little bit like a freshly like a fresh kind of operated thing i'll just show you so the line under there is just looking unbelievably neat and tidy i cannot believe how good that looks you can see my old scar and where like that's old scar and then obviously that's new scar that in time will heal and it will be like there'll be no color in it it's gonna be an incredibly an incredibly neat scar um, but obviously at the minute it's quite red and then yeah i wish i could show you my nipples that sounds incredibly strange but like that's the bit that's most interesting to watch heal because that they're doing all sorts but anyway i'll show you the other one but yeah it just it looks it looks good you know, I was telling you in the last vlog that I had a little freak out. <laughs> no more freak outs. Um, I'm actually seeing my surgeon on Monday and that's going to be not the final. Like, I feel like I've been going back so much, which I have. But again, it's like a like it needs a lot of checking in on. But yeah, I'm seeing him on Monday for probably one of the last times and I'll probably see him again in two months. I have a really horrible feeling that he's going to want to do a small procedure, which is quite common but i really don't want it to happen but it's where some of the stitches on this nipple have they're not dissolving and they're really close to the surface and actually they're poking out of the surface like they're black stitches like i can see it clear as day it's, it's like a massive loop of, of wire that is sticking through my skin it's scabbed but underneath the, like uh, uh. <laughs> and sometimes when that happens if they're able to they'll just pick it out cut it or pick it out and oh my god if, if that has to happen i'm gonna probably pass out to be honest because i can't imagine anything more squeamish but i'm 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 worrying about things that haven't even happened yet general boob update it's going very well it's very slow 
I still don't have much arm. Like this is about it. Like I can lift them up this way. Great. I cannot like, like just, I haven't been able to wake up and do a big stretch since the operation, which is obviously like the nicest feeling in the world. But I've got all my everyday movement back. Like all the things I need to like completely fend for myself. Like I can even reach things on the top shelf now. Um, I can't like reach, reach, but like, I can do that so it's fine I just can't put pressure on that stretch um but like I'm absolutely fine I think I'm just being a little bit impatient I mean maybe a lot impatient but I think it's just impatience they're also extremely itchy which is a very normal part of the healing process but I I've woken up a couple of times itching like it it can it can be a lot but I promise soon I'll stop talking about it and we won't need to be doing every vlog boob updates because they'll just be back to normal and I can just exist with my normal boobs again. I hope you are really well. Let me know, like genuinely let me know. I know this is a thing that loads of, like ev like so many YouTubers say like, let me know this or uh, like comment down below this, like whatever. But genuinely, if you've got any holidays booked or holidays planned or you're, you've got any really fabulous recommendations for places or if you're feeling the exact same as I am and want to start doing some more interesting life things, let me know. So I'm not the only one over here feeling very envious of everyone's wonderful holidays. Woo! <laughs> so I might have had a small I don't want to call it a breakdown i'm not sure what it was though uh the other day when uh well you wouldn't have seen but i will insert a few clips here of me having a small breakdown mm. something gross just happened oh, i feel so strange <laughs> sorry it's covered in human juice and that was me um trying to deal with a stitch abscess or a couple of stitch abscesses so basically I won't insert the rest of it because it's like a 20 minute clip of me just frantically, I don't know what was going on to be honest, I think I'd had two coffees that day which I'll never do, um, one a day, that is more than enough for me so it's I always do weird shit when I have to but I now know that what it was was a stitch abscess because I've actually just got back, oh God, my hair is greasy. I've just got back from my surgeon for my five week checkup. I'm seeing him again in another six weeks. I know it's a lot of checkups, um, but it was such a complicated surgery. Um, if you didn't know, like the surgery was fully repositioning the nipples so they get cut out and replaced, opening up every single anchor scar, lifting the breast fold, removing a whole bunch of internal scar tissue, removing external scar tissue, reshaping some misshapen tissue from the scar tissue, inserting an implant, which was like a thin, long, flat thing, to hold the breast in position because of the breast tissue, and there were some chest wall staples. Because of the ridiculously like complicated nature of what I had done, Like it wasn't just implants or just an uplift or just some skin revision was everything um so because of this obviously like my body struggles to heal anyway hence the whole 10-year process of you know breast reduction gone wrong and it's so much to even think about now but basically uh like i said it's five weeks since the surgery and last week my nipple on this boob i watched it get inflamed for about four days and it was basically a lot of redness, a lot of heat in the area, um, really itchy, which can be signs of an infection, but because I just, I feel like I know my body really well. I knew it wasn't an infection, so I was not worrying about it. I just like very much was conscious that ni this nipple was like, don't know, doing something. And basically, this is, this is a little bit gross if you don't like gross stuff. I've said this in every vlog for the past like five vlogs but it came to like a big pussy boil it was under the skin but like i knew what it was and i popped it because i just knew it needed popping you know like when your body is trying to get rid of something it, it really needed popping there was a lot of pressure so i did and it was really like 
gross because I could see right into my nipple. Ugh. Um, but loads of pus came out and it left a big cavity. Again, sounds very dramatic and it's not as dramatic as I'm describing. Or maybe as you think. Well, it was, but it, it felt fine. Um, loads of pus came out and in amongst all the pus was um, a whole bunch of stitches. The sutures that they used to sew me up. And I'll insert a clip here of those because I was filming it as soon as they came out. So that's what it looked like. I know they look tiny, but when it comes out of your nipple, it feels very big. I'd say it was like two knots like that. You can see the little knot and a few other little pieces of string. And I was like sort of feeling them in my hand and they were like crispy, like they just sort of disintegrated once I got them out and squished them. Your body over time, like my body is disintegrating all the other ones for those that are in me, but those ones for whatever reason, my body like didn't like them. Maybe it was the position, it wasn't able to eat them up or because they were close to the surface my body just said no these don't belong here and pushed them out which is fine because that's exactly what it did and now there's a scab it's it's just the healing again it will create a scar that will take a lot longer to fade than the other scars but it's basically all fine but the day that that happened I was just like what the fuck I ran downstairs with stitches my hand like covered in stitches to be I was like something happened <laughs> but yeah I saw my surgeon today and he just said stitch abs suture, suture abscesses or stitch abscesses the same thing they are normal I also had another one it was smaller but down here and a smaller chunk of um stitching came out so obviously there's complications because it's me <laughs> but they're fine and today he said it's all fine healing well he said i can go back to the gym or he said i can do like my normal level of activity in one week and i was like no i do a lot of like running gymming like weights and he said yeah that's all fine but just in a week so i have been going to the gym but i've just been doing very like sitting on the bike squats like really not stuff that involves your upper body but let me show you what he did so we're back with the tapes you know last time I showed you all of these with no tapes on the tapes are all back on even though they irritated the skin he said they, they'll that shouldn't happen now because everything down here is at least closed but he says it's much better for the scars to keep them on and obviously I'm very prone to scarring so they're back on, which is fine. It's not the most comfy, but they're fine. So those are gonna be on for another six weeks. And my surgical bra needs to stay on for another five weeks. Like, it's not done just yet. You know, I said in the last vlog, I've been comparing myself to other people's he healing and how they're doing, which is a stupid thing to do. And this just reinforces how stupid it is because my operation is so, like, what's the word? I don't know. It's just, it's just, very very specific to me so yes my healing is going to be two or three months and that's only phase one of the healing i then need to actually let them really settle and that's going to be another four or five months and they're not going to look like how they will look probably for another eight nine ten months that was a bit of a rambly update of the boobs but they're doing really good uh and yeah can't complain they feel good they feel comfy I can sleep on my sides again I'm so excited to get back to properly like gymming like you know like angry sweaty gymming I've just been like poodling around the gym I'd say I mean I do work out and like get a sweat on but I'm ready to like see my PT again and really like challenge myself so that's exciting in other news you know last vlog I was talking to you about the reel and it hadn't even been posted yet. Something really weird happened. And I literally, like, I don't really know. Mm. On Instagram, the reel has 1.7 million views. And on TikTok, it has 1.6. Like, I literally knew it was good. I loved it. But I've never had a piece of content or a piece of work do that before. Um, so since I posted it, which was four days ago, I've been silent online. Silent because it felt so overwhelming. 
it feels like there are so many new people looking and I'm not used to them I'm just used to like me and you like I'm just used to us it's all in my head like and and yeah that many views I was like what 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 do I do I mean it's a lovely feeling because you saw how much work I put into it and like it was three weeks worth of work and prep and planning and doing um so that's amazing that it got so many people got to see it because yeah I don't know I just like what the fuck do you do with that information like 1.7 million people just wild but yeah pretty cool pretty impressed with myself but now I'm too scared to post anything so uh need to get myself over that over the next few days and uh and get something posted I think I've got my braces in so if I talk a little bit weird that's why I saw my dentist the other day and he was not happy with how little I've been wearing them which you will know because I don't know if I've ever even worn them on a vlog before <laughs> I'm supposed to be wearing them for the past like six months. I don't know why I didn't to be honest. I just, well, they make you talk weird. Oh God, they make you talk really weird. Anyway, I'm actually just about to start filming a reel for the third time. This, this is the third time I'm filming this exact reel. And I just didn't like, it wasn't perfect the first few times. So I'm back again. I spent six hours filming yesterday, six hours. And I decided I didn't like the footage. I annoy myself so much, but this is the beautiful set of underwear. Oh, you can say that? Yeah. From Lap. Uh, I think it's still working, but I cannot believe that you just survived that. <laughs> anyway, this is the underwear from Lounge. And I'm doing a full, you see my little thingies? A full reel on all their new intimates. So I've literally got down here every single set in order, ready to go. I'm doing like a really cool like rip them off sort of reel. Should be like really quick. But these pieces are absolutely beautiful. I feel like most people know like of lounge underwear and probably have something from lounge underwear. I don't know if their intimates get enough praise or attention because they're incredible. Like the quality is unbelievable. They are more expensive than their usual stuff but when you compare the prices to like an equivalent brand like Honey Badet or one of those and their quality is just as good. I mean just as good, it's amazing. I feel like they don't get enough credits. So I'm gonna get this filmed. But yeah, I love it, look at the bra. How is it making my boobs look so nice? I know I showed you this one last time but oh, it just gets better. Being dramatic am I like these are incredible look at the detail and the little frill and wait till you see the back how pretty also I really like them because all their sets come with these little like garter belt bands so obviously you can take this off and just put them in stockings if you want to wear like the traditional sort of stocking set but you don't have to because they come with these and actually like it's the same effect and I really I much prefer these little bands than wearing like full stockings because they're really annoying. This stuff is so nice. Wow. I just walked all the way home looking like this. Good morning. I'm just back from the gym and it's such a long walk because I've only just started going back to the gym like literally just last week. I forgot how far it is. But I am back in the gym, which is so nice. Obviously, I'm not doing anything upper body, but I can like I can just move again, which is just the nicest feelings. I did a little jog, did some rowing machine, rowing. I don't know why I said it like that. But yeah, just loads of stuff that I've not done in ages, which was so lovely. And then I got myself a coffee on the way home, which I need to microwave. That underwear from yesterday was just amazing. But it's made me realise I really seriously need to figure out some sort of storage solution because I cannot store the amount of underwear that I have. Like I do have my underwear like on a rotation and I'm talking about like my fancy beautiful stuff, not my everyday stuff. So I do sell quite a lot of the stuff that I've either only worn for photos or for photo shoots, obviously with protective underwear, but um, I just can't keep it all. 
that's my bra <laughs> by the way this bra even though i just took it off is the best high impact high support bra in the entire world so it like i've worn this before and after the operation and i just like you can see like it's really like well structured it's a really high neck which i know a lot of people don't like because it's not it doesn't feel the nicest i personally don't like love how it looks on me either but for high support when you're doing a serious something in the gym or a run or anything that needs genuine real support that bra i will leave it linked below because i've never had a, a bra that's higher support than that genuinely and trust me i've been putting it to the test since wearing it with these boobs because one little ounce of movement i'm like oh no it doesn't feel good i just i just did a whole pt session and my boobs didn't move once and i was running on the treadmill and doing a rowing machine like they just they felt so secure anyway what was i saying what was i even talking about oh yeah I need to figure out a storage solution for my underwear. In our next house, I will have the dressing room of dreams. I've decided I will prioritize that room. Ooh. I will prioritize that room and make it my little sanctuary heaven with all my beautiful underwear. I don't even want it stored. I want it displayed. I want like somewhere you can open up some double doors and just see three piece sets and garter belts just displayed beautifully that's the dream all right i'll be inserting this clip in a few years when i have that and it exists i need to tell you about an event i went to and i cannot believe i did it i made myself do it i am so bad at going to events that i'm invited to i say yes and then i always cancel last minute and send a really embarrassing apology email and i always feel so bad but the reason i back out so often is like a genuine travel and not social anxiety but like my travel anxiety is pretty extreme and it's extreme for like a completely valid reason i have had several panic attacks and not just you know little just uncomfortable phases of anxiousness full attacks where i lose consciousness as in physically pass out need assistance most dramatic horrible horrible thing to happen and it's happened to me on more than one occasion in the past year on public transport something i'm working on i am seeing a therapist for anxiety and panic disorder and it's all going really well and i really like her and you know like the work is being done but for me to go to this event the other night was a huge achievement for me like it wasn't like a little well done me it was like a massive i really achieved something by going so i'll show you the goodie bag in a minute that looks nice i went to the savage uh Savage Beauty, yeah, Savage Beauty. I was gonna say, it's not Savage Skincare. They call it Savage Beauty um, event in London. It was really near Blackfriars. It was really easy to get to. And I went by myself and I didn't know um, many people going. I knew Steph was going, Steph Toms, who um, actually messaged me three days before. And I honestly think she is like the main, if not the only reason I went because she messaged and said, are you going? And I had already sort of, given into the fact that i wouldn't feel strong enough to go and i was like yes i am coming coming i'm gonna try and go and see you there so the whole day before and the whole day i kept saying to b i'm going to brighton station tomorrow basically my extreme like fear response pops up in a lot of public transport settings but especially train stations tube stations it's another fucking thing we ain't even gonna like think about that yet because that is the next stage of my progress but train stations i just arrive and i know a lot of people feel anxious in train stations and travel settings and airports and things like that um but my like i i have a physical response to being there and it's incredibly physical so the way i got myself to get on the train and go to this event was I was lying to myself and to be all day and I said I'm going to the train station later to have a chai latte <laughs> that was my thing because there's a prep at Brighton train station and I genuinely told myself right firstly get ready to go and have a chai latte and I did and I genuinely put an outfit on that I wasn't super fussed about but I was like I'm going to Brighton station to get a chai latte I don't care what I wear I got to Brighton station 
And because I had genuinely convinced my brain that I was only there to get a chai and I was going to turn around at any minute to come home, I was fine. So I got my chai, I sat on a bench in Brighton Station and then I thought, right, I'm gonna buy a ticket to Blackfriars, but I'm not gonna use it. I'm just gonna buy a return and spend 20 quid on it. And I genuinely, genuinely convinced myself that I was buying this ticket just for the sake of it. So I bought the ticket and then I sat back down on the bench. And I was like, wow, this was so easy. I, this was so comfortable. I, I managed all those steps fine, which doesn't sound like a lot, but the fact that I was in a train station with a relatively normal heart rate and I wasn't sweating or feeling dizzy or any of those things, I was like, wow, this is just progress beyond progress. It's amazing. Um, and I have been in the train station since I've had these sort of like panic things um but it's never been an e easy experience it's always been like a right deep breath head down sort of thing um and then I thought right I'm gonna go check the train board just to look at the pretty board <laughs> and then I saw my train was six minutes away and then I saw what platform it was on so I told myself right I'm gonna go through the barriers and sit on a comfy seat on the train and I was like, it's warm on the train, I get a nice soft seat, the train was really empty, so I was like, I'm gonna enjoy my chai sitting in a nice environment. And then I was like, if these doors close and the train starts moving, that's fine because I'm just gonna get off at the next stop and come home. And I did that until I got to Blackfriars, which is an hour. I got to Hassex and I was like, should I get off here? No, I'm still enjoying my chai, I'm gonna sit for a bit longer. Like uh, Haywards Heath, for all the fucking stops, I can't remember them. But then we got to Blackfriars and I, th <laughs> this might sound completely nuts if, if anxiety and travel anxiety and panic attacks is not something that you've experienced or, or like, yeah, have gone through or don't know anyone with it. But that is that way of thinking is the only reason I got there. And then I got off the train at Blackfriars and I thought, right, what platform is it to go home? And then I thought, I saw the exit, I thought, why don't I walk around Blackfriars Station and then get the train home? And as I was walking around Blackfriars Station, I bumped into the event, I saw the big sign for it. Um, and that is literally how I got there. And then before I knew it, I was there. And I had subconsciously convinced my brain that I wasn't doing anything scary. I was just going for a chai latte. And I feel so proud of myself for sort of coming up with this weird brain trick to get me to do these things because there's no way in hell a year ago I could have done that there's just no way I've never I've sounds a bit funny but like I've always been like a fairly anxious person I've had panic attacks as like when I was younger but a year ago I had a really really major uh, event happen that really like sort of like spiraled my mental health to like a really fucking terrible place and I had about three months of um like as well like as like, severe panic attacks but like as severe as they can get like I said I, I lose consciousness I completely black out but since then I've been working myself back up to where I am now I'm still going to be keep working myself back up I've been chatting for a long time sorry this just this was not meant to be some sort of big chat about anxiety but it's happened <laughs> Not only did I get there, get the awful travel fear out of the way, I then walked into a room full of hundreds, I actually think there were hundreds of people there, influencers and celebrities that I didn't know, and I knew I didn't know them. I walked into that room and I just sort of held my own. Like, I was there for quite a long time, not knowing anyone and genuinely like doing laps of the event space. And then I went to the toilet, stood there awkwardly for a bit. And then I went and stood on the balcony awkwardly for a bit. And I wasn't, trying to fill that empty space of feeling uncomfortable i wasn't on my phone i wasn't there frantically texting people i might have known just being like where are you i just accepted that it was quite an uncomfortable situation and i just walked around the room and i don't know maybe people saw me and thought maybe it's strange that she's by herself but if they did like that's fine and i just let myself feel really uncomfortable and awkward and there was something really enjoyable about it and really freeing and really like, this is what we're all scared of. 
is feeling alone in a room full of people. But actually, I didn't die. I didn't fall over. I didn't, nothing bad happened. I just was the girl who arrived by herself and didn't know anyone for a bit. And that's fine. Anyway, I eventually saw a couple of familiar faces, which was lovely, had catch ups. And then I ended up staying there for longer than I would have ever thought I would have stayed there. My my bare minimum for these events is always just turn up. Turn up and leave and then you've done it. You can say you've been and that's a huge achievement in itself. But I ended up chatting to a few girls for ages and it was really lovely. Um, loads of the UK drag queen queens were there. I was way too nervous to say hi, but I so wanted to. Kitty Scott Claws, um, Elle of a Day lots i think there were like five or six um of the drag queens were there and i was literally just like quietly fangirling i couldn't believe them i saw kitty scott claws in brighton right before she went on drag race so i wanted to be like ah oh, i've loved you for ages but i was just i was too scared um but that's fine they were beautiful beautiful in real life ah, like genuinely breathtaking especially kitty god her skin anyway and I went to the event and I just, I did it. And I'll insert a couple of clips here of it. These influencer events, I need to tell you about them. They are nothing like what you think they are. They're nothing like what people put on their stories. They are just so far from what they are portrayed online. Even like when I've seen vlogs of events, I've watched vlogs of events that I've been at and just been like, that's not what it was like because normally like there's some music over it there's some quick ch like transitions different shots it's a lie <laughs> not saying the people who film them are trying to create a lie but what we see because even on the train home i was looking at stories of people who had been there quietly looking for myself in the background like awkwardly and the portrayal of what they seem to be on on social media is so different it's not bad, but it's every everyone there is awkward. Even the people who on social media are taking the flashiest pictures and doing the fucking most as they should, they're, they're not doing that in real life. Like they're not, that energy does not sort of come through in real life. I'm not saying like, I feel like I'm, that sounds a bit mean about those people, but it's not. It's just they're normal. Like, everyone there is normal. Even though I was seeing these beautiful drag queens who I was like, wow, like, I love you and what you do. I was still also like, yeah, but you are just a normal human in this room with all these other normal humans. Like, no one in here is above anyone else. I wish I could actually just, like, wear a GoPro and have it live streamed onto Instagram so you can literally be there with me. <laughs> So I can, so you can see that these things are just not what they appear to be. And it's not in a good or a bad way. If anything, it's a good way because every time I go to these, I feel like I'm gonna be so intimidated. I get there and I'm like, everyone's normal. Everyone here is just a normal human who has had a day before this day. They're probably doing something after this event. They've probably got plans tomorrow. Like they, we just all happen to have come together in this one event space. <laughs> But it's a really interesting one, even though I've been to so many of these events now. Every time I'm just surprised at how normal they are and how normal everyone who's there is. I could also like spill some tea, like majorly on some events that I've been to in the past, which to be honest I might do. I feel like it might be a fun Q&A video or something like that because yeah, some of the shit that I've seen at these things and some of the like things I've witnessed have just been like, I don't think uncomfortable is the word, like really fucking weird. Anyway, maybe a story for another time. <sighs> God, ramble, don't I? Jesus, fucking hell, 18 minutes. Whoops. I am going to enjoy my coffee. I'm having a really boring day. Just emails and that's it to be honest. Pretty much just emails. I'll leave the link in the, the, in the description to the reel that I was making yesterday. It's really fucking cool. I must admit, it's really fucking cool. There's also a mistake in it. There's a mistake right at the beginning and if you spot it, well, you don't need to let me know, but 
see if you can spot the mistake in it because I'm so annoyed at myself for it and I even refilmed it but when I refilmed it the light was just not quite as good and I would rather have better lighting than a slight mistake but yeah you might spot the mistake in it Yay.